Hey y'all, I am on my way home and I wanted to share something with y'all um, that is very important to me. Um, for starters, I'm paying attention to the road. I'm not paying attention to y'all. So don't go turning me in. I'd appreciate it. Um, but let's get down to business. Um, about 12 years ago, um, the 12 year anniversary is coming up next month. I don't know the date anymore because I uh, worked really hard not to focus on a particular date. I didn't want that date to be remembered for the rest of my life. The topic is domestic violence. 12 years ago, I was held at knife point by a man that I was dating. I was pregnant. He knew it and he didn't like it. Um, as you all know, I have a very healthy, energetic, and crazy 11-year-old uh, who is my life, and he knows it. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is domestic violence and that there is hope. You can survive it. Um, I am a living, breathing example of survivor, of, of a survivor. Um, he held me at knife point and I fought like hell to get out. He was a coward. And I have no problem admitting that to this day. thing about domestic violence is that it does not discriminate. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be educated, you can be uneducated, you can be black, white, Asian, um, does not matter. Uh, domestic violence is out there. You can be a man, a woman, a wife, a, fa a father, a husband. Um, there's elderly abuse, pet abuse. All of it can um, be included in domestic violence given the situation. Um, I was in a relationship. I wasn't married. Um, I was dating. Um, and it was still considered domestic violence. Um, did he hit me? No. Nope. He never once uh, used his vest and hit me. Never. What he did do, he, uh, he tried to choke me. He used pressure points on me. He threw me to the ground. Anything that he could do that would not leave a mark. He beat me down emotionally, mentally, financially. Um, what I'm getting at is there's not just one kind of abuse. You might say, well, he doesn't... Uh, when, when he hits me, he doesn't use a closed fist. Or, she doesn't hit me, you know, she just, you know, she calls me names and, you know, she degrades me and um, she controls all the money. Yeah, I, I, get a, I get an allowance of $50 a month. No, that's not love. That is not love. That's abuse. Um see what else you know controlling uh, every aspect of your life um, showing up at work um, because you're not talking you know you're not checking in it's one thing to check in because you didn't show up where you were supposed to and you're concerned but it's another thing to have to check in to keep tabs that's not a relationship it's not. Next month will be yet another month, another year. Um, but I'm a survivor. That my son is a survivor. 
Do I still have PTSD from it? Yes, I do. Has it gotten better? Yeah, it has. Does my son know what's happened? He knows a little bit. He knows what's age appropriate for him. Do I talk badly about his father? No, I just state the facts. And again, those are age appropriate. Uh, so I'd appreciate if y'all did not show him this video. Not until he's ready. And I'll be the one to do that. Thank you. Um, I'm driving in circles right now. So <laughs> I don't want to go home. I'll get interrupted. I'll, I'll be there in a few minutes. Um, what I'm getting at is... If you're in a, an abusive situation... There's hope. You can survive it. You can get out of it. I know there are a million excuses to stay in it, but there, it just takes one excuse, just one, to get out and save your life, to save your children's lives, to save your pet's life. It's just one, one reason, and that's to live, because you, you deserve to live a life that is free from abuse. No one deserves that type of life. When I went, when I, when I escaped and I went and found a police department in Nashville, that's where I was living when it happened, the police officers in the, the station that I went to, I remember they rushed me back into an office for my safety and I proceeded to tell them what had happened and they told me what, what was going to happen so that I would be safe. And I remember they took me to, they, they put me in the back of the cop car because the, it was a city, you know, it wasn't a small town. Um, and they took, put me in the back of the cop car and that was scary for me. You know, here I am, I just had a, a knife put to my throat, to my belly. I'd just been told that I was going to die. And now here I am in the back of a cop car. And I'm crying on the way. He, you know, the officer's telling me that he's taking me to the magistrate and we're going to get an order of protection. And then he's going to be arrested. And I'm crying in the back seat of this cop car. And the officer, I wish to this day that I knew his name. He said, Carrie, what are you more afraid of? And I said, my life is about to change forever. As soon as I do this, as soon as he's arrested, he's going to be mad and my life is going to change forever. And you know what he said to me? He pulled up into the, the courthouse parking lot. And he opened the door. And he looked me in the eye. He said, sweetheart. If you don't do this, your life will change forever. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to kill you. He's not going to stop. So you have to do this, and you have to do this for yourself, and you have to do it for your child. I wish I could remember his name. Because I can tell you right now, I would look him up, and I'd tell him thank you. So we went, and he stood right beside me as I stood in line. I was surrounded by scary people. I'm not going to lie. They were scary. I was scared. I was traumatized. And he went through the entire process with me. We got the paperwork signed. He went, and he put me back in the, the back of the cop car. And he explained to me what was going to happen. He told me that we were going to go to the apartment complex where he was. And that there were going to be other officers there. And that it might be scary for me because they would have their weapons drawn. Because um, the what had occurred was considered 
uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. So there were there were other officers there. There were um, between tw ten and fifteen other police cars, and they had asked me if he had guns, and I said yes. He he was um, recently out of the army, and hey, I love our military. I I don't hold a grudge just because one guy is a complete idiot. Um, but I watched them as they arrested him. And the officer that was in the car with me asked me to identify him. I did. And I cried. I cried a lot. And he took me back to my car. He talked to me. He made sure that I had everything that I needed for, you know, victim advocate. And um, so that I would, knew, I, I would know which police department that I needed to contact. Because I went to the wrong one. I, well, not the wrong one, but there was one that was closer to me. Um, he made sure I had every every bit of information that I needed and while he may not ever see this video um, thank you um, your words your words helped save my life that day what I'm telling you this for now is so that you will understand yeah, it's scary as hell. It's one of the scariest things I've ever been through. But I, I'm all right now. I've survived. I've got a 11 year old boy who's very happy. And I've struggled really hard to make my life something that's meaningful to me. I don't care what anybody else thinks about my life. Um, I went out and I, I've started to achieve things that I wanted to achieve for me. And if you're going through a situation, I don't care if you're a man, a woman, you know, a grandparent, a child, if you need help, I'm here. I will uh, give you the information that I can. I'll pass it along if you're scared. If you need the information for the lighthouse of Baldwin County I'm going to post it in the um, comments below uh, I'm also gonna put I'll put their website I'll put their phone number um, if you just want to talk to me I'm here um, I'll listen your story will stay between us but if anything please do not stay in a situation that puts your life at, at risk. Don't stay in a situation where you are not living your life to the fullest because someone else is controlling you. It'll be alright. You just have to survive. Never stop fighting. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. So, I've, I've made this kind of long, but I hope, if anything, that it helps somebody. And if y'all want to know the songs that got me through that time, Keith Urban's Stupid Boy and Dixie Chicks, I'm Not Ready to Make Nice. Check them out. They're pretty cool. Later, y'all.